how much of your sexual past do you need to share with someone to be in a relationship with them? How detailed do you need to get about past sexual sins? And can you just avoid talking about past sexual sins altogether before just getting married to someone? I don't think there are absolute right or wrong answers to these types of questions. I think this is one of those topics that each man and woman is really going to have to weigh through for themselves to decide what they need to know before getting married. So rather than giving you strict rules that all people must follow before getting serious with someone, I'm rather going to give you some principles of applying scripture to help you decide what you should talk about before relationship gets serious and headed towards marriage. So in this video, we're gonna talk about five uncomfortable sexual questions that you need to get answered before you get serious in a relationship with someone. Number one, sexual questions should be asked if the answers to those questions could result in a marriage deal breaker. The first thing I wanna highlight in this video is that God's grace is sufficient in every possible manner of that statement. It is sufficient in all circumstances. So there is no sin, no sexual sin, that can separate us from the love of God. Because of this, I don't believe there is a sexual sin that must be a deal breaker for you because God's grace is sufficient. However, again, I think this is one of those topics where we are each free to make a personal decision about what is important to us when it comes to marrying someone and when factoring in past sexual sin. If, for example, you're a virgin and you are very committed to marrying a virgin, that is okay. It's your choice to make that type of decision. I don't think you are biblically required to marry another virgin if you are a virgin, but I also think you are free to make that type of decision if that's what is on your heart to make. So my point here is really that before a relationship gets too serious, you need to know what questions are marriage deal breakers. You have to decide what would cause me not to want to marry this person when it comes to past sexual sins. And you need to find answers to those questions before the relationship gets too serious so you're not needlessly dating someone and opening your heart to someone that you're not gonna end up with. Number two, sexual questions about when should be answered before things get too serious. Point one was really about the what. Now we need to talk about the when. And the first thing I'll say here is that I think it's wise to focus more on the recentness of a past sexual sin compared to a sin that happened in the distant past. So for example, maybe somebody went away from the Lord and they engaged in a sinful season of worldliness and rebellion and they committed a series of sexual sins during that time. They were sleeping around basically. And now they've repented, they've come back to Christ and you're starting to connect with this person. And you're wondering, what should I do about this? I didn't have a season like that, they did. D does this affect how I feel about them? Well, I would say that if this happened a long time ago, you have a better ability to say they've matured and grown out of that and they're uh, sanctified in a greater way versus if that just took place, if that was a recent series of sexual sins and now you're in a relationship or thinking about in a relationship with that person, that's a bigger red flag. Now, the, the thing I really wanna emphasize here is that this is not because of forgiveness both of those people in those types of situations are fully forgiven as soon as they confess and repent and turn to Jesus. So this is not about forgiveness, rather this is about maturity and sanctification. And maturity and sanctification take time. So if someone was just in a series of a sexual sin, that shows they probably haven't had time to be healthy enough to engage in a healthy relationship. Number three, questions about a pornography addiction should be answered 
before things get too serious. Unfortunately, we live in an age where it is very common for men and some women to be addicted to pornography. Thus, this is just one of those topics that you probably should talk about before things get too serious because there's a high likelihood that this has been an issue or is an issue for this person that you're considering being serious with. So if someone has had a pornography addiction, this does not need to de be a deal breaker. I'm not saying you should ask this question and if the answer is yes, I have had, or that is something I struggle with, that, oh, this automatically means you shouldn't be in a serious relationship with this person. That's not the point here. You wanna see how they respond to this question. If they're being flippant about it, oh, it's not a big deal, you know, everybody does that. Or they're being prideful. Yeah, I used to struggle with that, but I know I can never do that again. You know, I'll never fall to that, to that sin again. You know, I'm completely over it. It'll, it'll never happen. You know, if they have an immature view of sin, particularly towards that sin, that's a red flag. Whereas if they're humble, they're being honest, they're telling you the truth, and they're saying, yeah, that, that has been an issue for me, and I've put up safeguards in my life, and this is how I've repented of that, and I know that I can fall to that at any point, so I'm always going to be on guard and fighting that in my life, and that's something I know I need to be very cautious about. So that would be a good sign. So you have to decide with the variables. I can't tell you what a healthy time of repentance is for someone who has struggled with a pornography addiction because there are variables, the severity of the type of sin they've been in, how long they were in that sin, how long they've been repenting. Just there's too many variables to say, you need to give them this much amount of time and that means they've had a healthy time of repentance towards this sin. You really have to weigh through that yourself, pray about it and obey what the Lord is leading you to do. Number four, questions that will help you know if you're generally on the same page when it comes to your views about sex within marriage. So now we're not so much talking about past sexual sins, but more so about what this person has come to believe about sex within the context of marriage. Now, the reason I said you wanna generally be on the same page and just keep this whole this whole conversation general is because obviously this can incite a lot of sexual passion and become a temptation if you're talking about detailed sexual things about your future possible marriage with this person that's not good that can be an arouser for the flesh so really the point here is that you two just want to make sure you have a similar view about the importance of sex within marriage because for example, there are people who think, you know, sex is really just about procreation. It's just about having kids. Whereas people like me and many others would say, well, yes, it is about having kids, but it's also given to us for other reasons, like expressing love on a regular basis with your spouse. It's a means of also avoiding sexual temptation when you're having regular sex with your spouse. So you just wanna make sure you're on the same page because if there's a huge mismatch there on the views of sex and you have a strong view this way and this person has a strong view that way, it's probably best that you figure that out sooner rather than later because that is probably a marriage deal breaker. And number five, you need to make sure you both are sexually attracted to each other before things get too serious in a relationship. Unfortunately, Christians have been taught some wildly odd things when it comes to sexual attraction and we often overcomplicate this topic. And so Christians often swing to the extreme and say, it shouldn't matter at all. You should just date and marry someone based upon their character. Well, inner character and someone's Christian maturity is more important than physical attraction. That's not to say that physical attraction shouldn't matter at all. You should be physically attracted to the person that you're considering marrying and that person should be physically attracted to you because if they're just choosing you for your character and they're not physically attracted to you at all, that's going to affect your intimacy in marriage and your ability to feel loved by that person as the years go on. So how attracted do you need to be to marry someone? Well, I found the simplest way to answer that question is that you need to be attracted enough to where you want to have sex with them. 
because in scripture we're commanded to have sex with our spouses and you shouldn't be having sex with someone you don't want to have sex with. It's supposed to be something you want to do with your spouse. So you have to at least meet that threshold. Would you want to have sex with them? Would they want to have sex with you? If you don't, if it's just not to that level, you have not yet met that threshold with that person of physical attraction. And that's a bad sign that you two would make a good couple in marriage. Giving this video a thumbs up is a great way to support this ministry. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com and I'll see you at the next video. God bless.